TGIF, everybody. This is Chris from CD Scale Models. Just wanted to stop in, see how everybody's doing, how everyone's feeling. The holiday season is upon us, people. And before you know it, it's going to be January. Just flies. I had some time, so I wanted to give my thoughts on the topic that a lot of people are speaking about, which is Holy Grail Kits. So, before I put my two cents in on that, I just wanted to thank a good friend of mine, someone who gave my channel a boost very early on when I was a nobody, and I'm still a nobody, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm just some dope that makes model cars, and that's about it. <laughs> and I don't even know if they're any good, but who the hell knows? I'm trying, that's all I could say. Anyway, my friend, the guru, Mr. Thomas White, old Tom, Rambler 69. Tom, I got your card a few days ago. It's just been a very, very busy time in my life, as you know, because we text on a on somewhat of a regular basis. He'll send me some pictures here and there. I always ask Tom questions, and Tom, I hope I'm not being a pest when I ask you questions, because that's the last thing that I want to be. But there's certain things I don't know, and I just figured if I ask, then I know. And Tom has been gracious to always help me and always steer me in the right direction, and I thank you for that, and it truly means a lot to me, because I know every time I ask you something, I know that you're going to help me, and if I can ever help you in any way, shape, or form, I really don't know how I can, but <laughs> I'll certainly do everything in my power to reciprocate, but I just wanted to thank you and your wife. I did get the Christmas card, as, as I got the last one last year as well. So I want to thank you guys for it. Um, you have a great holiday and a great New Year as well. God bless. All right, so with that being said, Holy Grail Kits. Well, I know different people have different thoughts and different ideas on what a Holy Grail Kit is and what the definition of a Holy Grail Kit is and all of that stuff. And that's all fine, well, and good. I... I don't have an opinion on it. Uh, in other words, you know, I know some people say Holy Grail kits are kits that they can't afford, uh, kits that they can't get. There's one particular kit. I don't know. You know, who knows what the the verbiage is or, you know, the uh, what the meaning of it is. There are a few kits that I do want. Um, it's not that they're not attainable for me. That's really not it. Um, it's just when I get the kits... There's a few things that the kits don't offer, so I'm, I'm kind of at a standstill, and I would hate to get a kit and then have it, and then it's not going to look the way that I want it because they're older kits, and, and I'll tell you what I mean. Um, I love muscle. If anyone doesn't know, I'm pretty much a muscle guy for the most part. I mean, I like doing hot rods and stuff, but at heart, I'm a muscle car guy, and there are some Johan kits that I want out there. And probably the one that I really do want is the Rebel Machine. Now, I know a lot of people, when they build it, they do the red, white, and blue scheme because that's what that car is known for. Me, I wouldn't do it that way. They made the Rebel Machine in a couple of solid colors, and I believe the hood had like a blackout on it. And I think one of the colors is called Bittersweet. Another color is kind of like an olivey green. I've seen one in a darker blue. I've seen one in a bit of a brighter blue. That's how I would build it, in all honesty. I wouldn't do the typical red, white, and blue because it doesn't appeal to me as much as the other one does. I guess because maybe it's a little understated. I, I don't know. Nothing against the red, white, and blue one. I mean, it's unmistakable. It's a way cool car, and believe me. If I had a chance to buy one, I'd tap that thing all around and care how patriotic it is or not. doesn't matter to me, but for my money, I would rather do 
a little bit more of a natural color. So at any rate, the reason why, and this is just how Johan kits are, I get it. Um, it's just it, they're the only game in town as far as that type of a car. Everything's molded in. There's no dash gauges for it. I don't know if dash gauges are made for the car from Best Model Car Parts. And I don't know if, you know, aftermarket gauges would fit. I really never looked into that capacity too much. I, I'm guessing they may. Not really sure. But that kind of holds me back. Plus, if you get an old Johan kit, you don't know how the glass is going to be. I would hate to spend the money on, an, on a Johan kit and then have the glass you know, pretty scratched up where even if you polish it out and you do the novus and everything, you still kind of have a problem. I would hate to do that because you're spending all the time and you're putting all the effort in and you're really stuck with the glass. Unless I can find an absolute pristine kit where the glass is, you know, passable. And if I can get decals for the kit, then I would highly consider it. You know, the molded in exhaust and stuff and the molded in engine bottom, I can kind of work with that. But, you know, I like to put a lot of details in my kits. And I'm not saying that I have to put every little detail into the kit that I put. That's not it at all. But, you know, I don't like to pick out dash D, D you know, the gauges and stuff because you can't get a really nice look. So as long as I can get some things to remedy it, I'm okay with it. Decals I'm really not too concerned with because, like I said, I'm just going to build the kit stock anyway, so uh, the blackout on the hood, I'll just mask it off and airbrush it. I don't really care about the stripes. But with that being said, I also like the AMX. I love the Javelin. But again, uh, the same issue that I'm just, you know, a little hesitant on. I don't know if best model car parts or I don't know if they make the dash gauges that I can, you know, punch out with my decal punch to fill them in. If I can and if they'll fit then I'm, I would highly consider it, to be honest with you. But the glass is my real issue. You know, you have busted up glass, no matter how nice the kit looks, you know, that's an eyesore. So that's kind of my only hesitation on that. Um, trying to think what else. There was a, a kit, and I talked about this quite a few videos ago, when, how I got into modeling. There was an MPC kit. When I was a kid, um, one of my friends got it for me for my birthday. And I didn't really know much about modeling. I mean, I was 9, 10. It's an MPC kit and it's called Street Fever. It's a black vet and it has orange, pink, and yellow decals all over it. It's very, very Californian 1970s. But has turbine wheels on it. has a flip nose. I remember I had the kit as a kid and I started to paint it and I left it alone. I always went back to it. But then somewhere along the way, the kit got thrown out or something. But at any rate, I would love to revisit that kit again. Obviously, can't use the decals on that kit. The kit came out, I'm going to say 1978. That's just a guess. But uh, I see it here and there on eBay. You know, would I build it? Yeah, maybe. I don't know, you know. If me not putting the decals on it, you know, if I could still get that look, because the whole look for that kid is the decals. If I can get those decals, you know, reproduced to look exactly like the way they did from MPC, yeah, I would highly consider it. Just for the nostalgia factor. factor. And probably my last kit that I would say, and again, it's a decal thing, and I know several people have this kit, and it's a resin kit. The movie Corvette Summer with Mark Hamill came out in 1978. That Corvette, you either like it or you don't. There's really no in between. I like that vet. I don't know why, but there's something about that vet to me that just looks tough. And I know they make a resin kit, and I know they make the accessories, and that's all fine, well, and good. But my issue is that car has a very specific flame pattern on it. Now, I am no airbrusher in the least good enough to do that. And if you want to replicate that car, you have to do the decal. Well, you have to do the flames all over it pretty much spot on. I know they don't make decals for that kit. 
Uh, I don't know what the process is for decals. I don't know all that. But I'll tell you right now, if someone would make the decals for that kit, specifically for that kit, and I know that the decals kind of go up the front and they go up the sides and the back. And if there is a way that those decals can be reproduced or produced in some way, shape or form, I would buy them and I would get that kit and I would take my time and I would build that kit just like the movie car. But again, those little nuances just kind of hold me back because they're grail kits. You want them to look as nice as you can. You want them to look a certain way. But then at the same time, you're going to go through all the work, clear coat and all this stuff. And then you're going to have, you know, how are you going to do the flames by hand? It, it's, it, there's no way it's going to look good. That just holds me back from pursuing what I'm trying to achieve. And I don't want to sound like, uh, you know, I'm being a perfectionist or a prima donna. That's not it. It's just that they don't make decals. I can't airbrush those flames. I don't know how many people can airbrush those flames on a 124 scale car the way that the one to one is. So you either build it without or you try your luck and see how it goes. I'm not that good. So I would just kind of leave it alone and maybe suffer in silence. But those are probably my grail kits, I would say. And again, I could get them, but it's just that that's what's holding me back. Because they're old kits and, you know, you run the risk of, you know, not getting good glass or, you know, getting busted up glass and stuff. You know, the GTX build that I did, there was a tire mark in it and I wet sanded it and I used Novus. You could still see the tire mark. Thankfully, I had a spare kit and I used the glass and it's okay. But you know how aggravated I would have been if the kit's all nice and then you can see a tire mark and you can see, you know, BF Goodrich Radial TA in the glass. Things like that bother me. And I don't know how you guys feel, but, you know, that's kind of what holds me back. If I want to build the kit, I want to make it to where it's going to look like the way I hope to. But uh, I've been watching a lot of you guys' videos. And, and just so you know, I want to apologize to anybody that um, I haven't been commenting on a lot of my videos recently, and it's nothing any, it's nothing personal. It's just I'm trying to get commenting on people's videos, but life gets in the way, and now the holidays are here. And if anyone knows how I operate with the holidays, I got a lot of cooking and baking ahead of me. So, but I try, and I just wanted to let you guys know. I don't want you guys to think that I forgot about you, or I have no interest in reaching out to you. That's not the case at all. Uh, so I apologize. And again. If anyone does want a shop card from me, all you guys have to do is just send me an email in my description. I know a few people mentioned shop cards to me. Just send me an email. I'll be more than happy to send you a card out. I don't want anyone to think that I'm ignoring your requests for shop cards. But um, send me an email. I do check my regular email and my junk email. So you want one, send it to me. I'll get one out to you right away. Anyway, have a great weekend. Enjoy the holiday season. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, all.